Most people searching for pacemaker on YouTube get the same thing, a short animation or a surgery clip with zero explanation. But if you're a patient or a healthcare professional, you need much more than that. This is your all-in-one guide. From what happens before you walk into the hospital to how life feels months later. Let's fill the gap no one else is covering. Today's video is built on the latest clinical guidelines, real-life experience, and questions I've heard again and again, so you leave here informed, confident, and prepared. A pacemaker is a small device that sends electrical pulses to keep your heart beating at the right pace. Three main types exist, single chamber, paces one chamber, dual chamber, coordinates upper and lower chambers, biventricular, helps both sides beat together, often for heart failure patients. For healthcare pros, this is about mode selection and lead placement strategy. For patients, it's about restoring your heart's natural rhythm so you can live normally again. Pre-op isn't just paperwork. It's your foundation for a safe surgery. Blood tests, ECG, maybe echocardiogram or chest x-ray. Adjusting medications, especially blood thinners or certain heart meds. Fasting instructions, usually no food or drink for six to eight hours. Skin prep, cleaning and sometimes shaving the incision area. Pro tip, bring a written medication list. Saves time, prevents errors. For clinicians, this is the time to verify device indication, review comorbidities, and coordinate anesthesia or sedation plans. You'll be awake but comfortable. Local anesthesia plus sedation. A small incision is made near your collarbone. Leads are guided through a vein into your heart, placed precisely where needed. The pacemaker is connected, tested, and then placed under your skin. Most procedures take about one to two hours, with either same-day discharge or an overnight stay. For pros, fluoroscopy is your friend, but remember, lead stability and threshold testing are non-negotiables before closure. Yes, there are risks, infection, bleeding, lead displacement, or device malfunction, but these are rare and most are preventable or fixable. Your team monitors you closely before, during, and after to catch anything early. First weeks matter arm movement. Avoid lifting or reaching above your shoulder on the pacemaker side. This arm movement restriction will prevent lead displacement, tension on pacemaker pocket site, and bleeding on the incision. Wound care. Clean, dry, watch for redness or swelling. Skin glue is used most of the time on the outer layer of the incision. It starts peeling and wears off by about 7 to 10 days. It is important not to disturb the skin glue and let it peel on its own to prevent infection. Skin glue is water resistant. If the wound is fully closed, most providers can allow patient to shower. It is imperative not to scrub or submerge the site. Driving. Check with your doctor, often after one to two weeks. Device card. Keep it with you always. Don't forget to schedule early device interrogation to check lead position and pacing thresholds. Once healed, most people forget they even have a pacemaker. Normal appliances, safe, travel, easy, MRI, if your device is MRI conditional, yes, but always tell the imaging team. Avoid strong magnets or standing close to heavy industrial equipment. Myth. Pacemakers and MRI never mix. That's outdated. Many modern devices are designed for it. Myth. You can't exercise. False. Once cleared, activity is good for your heart and your mood. Bottom line, the right information changes everything. Now you know the full journey, something most videos skip. If this helped you, hit like, subscribe, and share it with someone preparing for a pacemaker. And for the healthcare pros watching, drop your top implantation tips in the comments so we can make this the best resource on YouTube. Thank you for watching my video and for supporting my channel.